In this video, we're going to look at the concept of limiting reagents. So we already looked at limiting reagents in the first video in this series, where we introduced it in the context of the case where we had some bread, we had some cheese, and we had some meat. And we asked the question, based on the amounts that we had, how many sandwiches could we make? And that's how we sort of set up what a limiting reagent was. So if you don't remember, just go back and watch that part of the first video. Uh, what we're going to do in this video is we're going to define some of the, those terms, limiting reagent, excess reagent, uh, theoretical yield, actual yield, and um, percent yield. We're going to define those terms, and then we're just going to jump right in, and I'm going to show you how to solve a problem that involves a limiting reactant. So that's what this video is going to be. So let's start by defining some terms. So we have the limiting reactant. And um, it's synonymous. So the reason why I put limiting reagents at the top and limiting reactant below, reagent and reactant is a synonymous term. So they're the same thing. Um, so you could say limiting reagents or limiting reactant, and the term is going to mean the same thing. So this is a substance that will control the yield of a reaction. And there's a couple of things uh, that it must be. So this must be a reactant, obviously. Uh, it must be entirely used up. And also, one thing to keep in mind is that it's not the reactant with the smallest mass. A lot of students will just look at the two, two or three reactants that are present and say, well, this one has the least amount of mass, so therefore it must be the one that's going to limit the reaction because I have the least of it. That's not necessarily, not necessarily true because there's two other things that we have to think about. We have to think about, well, when we're thinking about these ratios, we're thinking about how many moles of each thing we have. So you have to consider what the molecular weights are. You might have something that's very, very heavy in terms of a molecular weight and something that's very, very light. So you would need a lot more of the thing with the higher molecular weight than you might think because of its high molecular weight. So it's not just about how much you have. It's about how much um, product can you make based on the amount that you have. So that's something we, we're going to look at. So you must consider how much product each reactant makes. That's the key. So what we're going to do is we're basically going to test each reactant to see how much product it makes. And the one that makes the least amount of product is going to be the limiting reagent. That's going to be the one that's all the way used up. And then the other ones are going to be the excess reagents. So to define the excess reactants, um, these are the rea these are the reactants that are left over. And they're basically all of the other reactants that are not in excess. Uh, that, I'm sorry, they're all the other reactants that are not the limiting reagent. So what you're going to wind up with when this is over is you're going to wind up with the products plus the excess reagents. Remember, the excess reagents are not going to go away. We have, they're still going to be there because of conservation of mass. So you're going to wind up with the products. This is determined by the limiting reagent. And then the excess reagents, which is the excess that's left over from the ones that aren't used all the way up. Now let's talk about the two different types of yields we can get. So there's the first type, which is theoretical yield. So this is the amount of products... that can theoretically be produced by a reaction. So what I mean here is um, when, you do, when you sit down and you do the actual math, you're going to calculate a yield or how much product you can make. Now that is the theoretical yield. And this is going to be determined by the limiting reagent. Now the actual yield 
is a little bit different. So the actual yield is what you actually get at the end of the reaction. So really the difference is that the theoretical yield is what you get on paper and the actual yield is what you get when you do the experiment itself. So um, that's the difference. So then we can calculate what we call a percent yield, which is going to be, so the percent yield is gonna equal the actual yield or how much you actually made divided by the theoretical yield times 100. And the reason why that you don't get, oftentimes in, in, in any reaction, it's, it's fairly uncommon, especially in organic reactions, to get 100% yield. And that's because a reaction can take multiple different pathways and produce products that you may not expect, or may, maybe not necessarily the desired product. Let's look at how we can actually solve some problems in chemistry that involve limiting reagents and the, and the like. This problem uh, says the large-scale production of liquid acetic acid uh, involves the reaction of liquid methanol with carbon monoxide gas in the presence of a catalyst. In one test run, 15 grams of methanol was reacted with 10 grams of carbon monoxide. So it says, first things first, calculate the limiting reagent, or determine the limiting reagent. So when you determine the limiting reagent, we already kind of discussed this. What we're going to do is we're going to test to see how much product each reactant makes. Now, a couple of things here with this. So how do you know when you have a limiting reagent problem? So if we did not tell you determine the limiting reagent, how might you know that you might be doing a limiting reagent problem anyway? There's one important tell with limiting reagent problems, and that is Typically, a limiting reagent problem comes around when you are given the mass of more than one reactant, right? So you'll notice here we have 15 grams of methanol and 10 grams of carbon monoxide. Those two different masses can give us two different theoretical yields. That's the inherent issue with the limiting reagent problem. You can't just pick one randomly. You have to actually check to see which one's going to give you the, the, le the, the least amount of product. And then from there, we can decide that it's the limiting reagent. So sometimes you may get a problem where we won't necessarily explicitly tell you to determine the limiting reagent. But a good tell for when you're doing these problems is if you get more than one reactant and you get information about more than one reactant, then you know this is a limiting reagent problem, meaning you have methanol and carbon monoxide. So if they tell me, well, you have a certain amount of methanol and a certain amount of carbon monoxide, that's a good sign that you got a limiting reagent problem in front of you. Okay, so how do we do this? Well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to calculate the amount of product that each one of these can give us. So we'll start with the 15.0 grams of the methanol. And the chemical formula for methanol is CH3OH. So now at this point, we've gotten into the groove with how to do these things. Um, so it tells us that our molecular weight is uh, for methanol is 32.04 grams per mole. So we're going to start there. Now the reason why we're going to moles is because in the next step, we're going to want to go to our moles of product. So we want to figure out how much product can this methanol make us. So for every one mole of CH3OH in this reaction, so I go in and I look at the coefficients, and the coefficients in this reaction are 1, 1, and 1. It just so happens that this one is 1, 1, and 1. If it were something else, you would have to pull those balance coefficients from the reaction just like you normally would. You know, I don't want to make it seem like in a limiting reagent problem, it's always just one to one. It's not. It depends on what the balanced reaction is. So for every one mole of, of methanol, we have one mole of the acetic acid, HC2H3O2. And it gives us a molecular weight for the acetic acid for every one mole of that, H, oops, HC2H3O2. 
H3O2, we have 60.05 grams. So now in my calculator, I'm going to type in 15 times 1 times 1 times 60.05. Then I'm going to press the divide button and divide it by 32.04, divide it by 1, divide it by 1. Okay, and from that I get 28.1 grams of the HC2H3O2. Now let's check out the carbon monoxide. So the molecular weight of carbon monoxide is um, 28.01 grams for every one mole. And again, we have a one mole of CO to one mole of HC2H3O2. And that again comes from the balanced reaction. It's not always going to necessarily be one to one, but it's going to be whatever the balanced reaction tells you it's going to be. And then for every one mole of the product, we have 60.05 grams. And so if you, if you type that into your calculator, you do 10 times 60.05 divided by 28.01, you're going to get 21.4 grams of the HC2H3O2. Okay, so now we have to decide which one is the limiting reagent. So in this case, we're going to be looking for which one makes the least amount of product. And the answer to that is going to be the CO. So we're going to circle this answer. And we're going to say that our limiting reagent is equal to the carbon monoxide. And we've actually already answered our second question. So this says calculate the theoretical yield. So the theoretical yield in this case is how much in theory this reaction can produce. And we said that that's going to be based on the limiting reagent. So since we've calculated the mass of the acetic acid that's produced by the limiting reagent, we automatically get that in the first step. So I recommend doing it this way. You may have learned it a different way in high school. We, we, we will take that as long as you get the correct answer. You do have to show on the exam, no matter what, you do have to show on the exam two stoichiometry lines. So we have to see that you test both reagents. And we have to see a comparison between the two answers. So you have to show either one makes less product than the other, or some people do it a different way where one person looks to see, where you look to see how much the... CO the methanol would use and how much uh, methanol the CO would use and then you compare those two and then decide from that. Personally uh, from our perspective this is the most straightforward way because in the end you see how much product you make you easily compare by looking for the least amount the one with the least amount and then you automatically got your theoretical yield to answer the second part of the question. Now here's a really good question it says how much of the excess reagent remains? So we talked about this a little bit when we were doing the sandwich example. So we said, you know, okay, if we have the slices of cheese, the slices of meat, and the slices of bread, once we figured out which one the limiting reagent was, we could then go back and say, well, okay, if my limiting reagent was bread, how much cheese would I have used up in that reaction? And then I can subtract to figure out how much would be left over. So that's exactly what we're going to do now. We're going to take the carbon monoxide because that's our limiting reagent. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the limiting reagent to determine how much excess reagent was consumed, and then we subtract. So let's, let's start with that. So we take 10.0 grams of the CO, and we're going to get that to moles, 28.01 grams of CO for every one mole of CO. And in this case, we want to figure out, well, how much methanol would this have used up, right? Because in the reaction, this 10 grams of CO is going to use up some methanol. The amount that it uses is going to be less than the 15 grams. And the difference there is going to be how much is left over. So for every one mole of CO, I'm going to look to see how many moles of methanol are used. It's one mole of methanol, the other reactant. And then for every one mole of methanol, our molecular weight is 32.04 grams. So when you do this 10 times 32.04 divided by 28.01, you're going to get 11.44 grams of methanol consumed. And now we can subtract. 
So we can take our 15.0 grams, which is the amount that we start with. We use up 11.44 grams. And when we do that subtraction, we get 3.56 grams left over. So that's my answer for that part of the problem. 3.6 would be my answer with sig figs. So what I did was I figured out how much was consumed. I subtracted it from how much I started with, and then that tells me how much of the excess reagent is left over. Okay, now the last one's a pretty simple one. We're just going to do a percent yield calculation. So it says, okay, you, your actual yield is 19.1 grams. Calculate the percent yield for this reaction. So percent yield is equal to the actual divided by the theoretical times 100. So let's pull those values. So our theoretical yield we calculated was 21.4 grams. Our actual yield is 19.1 grams. So if we divide 19.1 divided by 21.4, that's going to equal 89.1%. And that's our answer for that. So this shows you how to use stoichiometry to do a limiting reagent problem, how to calculate the theoretical yield, which is really just one step and you get both answers. What we like to see on the exam is something that looks like this. We do like to see that you have like LR equals whatever the reagent is. That really makes it explicit that you did that step. We need to see two stoichiometry lines from both reagents or three depending on how many reagents there are. If there are three, you would need three. And then for the theoretical yield, we don't need any extra work. If you just, if you do it the way that I did it, you can just circle your theoretical yield and say, okay, I already calculated that. Now for the excess reagent, we showed you how to do that. You can, you can calculate how much reagent was consumed and then do the subtraction. And then for the percent yield, you see how to do one of those types of problems. So this is a limiting reagent problem. In the next video, we're going to go over some stoichiometry practice problems that are going to kind of ramp up to what you might see on the exam.